So water engineering, sounds cool right? But what is it and what do we actually do? Well stick around and you'll find out. G'day guys, welcome to EngGrad. Ed here, glad you could make it. This is the place where we talk all things civil engineering and specifically my field of expertise, water engineering. When I first started engineering, I had no idea about what a civil engineer actually did. I knew they created structures and they built buildings and they built roads and they built those amazing mega structures that you see on TV, but I didn't understand how they came to that. What's the process they went through? I mean, building a building is complicating and building a road is complicated. And so after spending eight or so years in the engineering field, I've learned how that happens and I really understand that now. And I wanna share that with you. I wanna share that knowledge with you guys Maybe you're at university, maybe you're um, just starting out university, or maybe you're looking for a job and you just want to know more about what we do as civil engineers. So today, I want to shed some light on what water engineers do, um, what's our day-to-day -day life like, and hopefully you can learn something. So as water engineers, what do we actually design? So we design water treatment plants. The filtration process within that plant to take the water from the raw water source and treat it so that it's a good enough quality so you can drink it. It also ensures that the community that it serves has enough water um, and that that quality of water is good enough to consume. We also design pumping stations, the waste and water pumping stations. These pumping stations ensure that there is enough water for the community and that there is enough pressure in the system so that the water will come out of the tap. Another thing we look at are water towers. You might be driving down the highway and, and see these big water towers out of nowhere. Those water towers essentially make sure that the water comes out of the tap within the community, that there's enough pressure in the system. We design the pipelines within those systems. So the pipeline from the treatment plant all the way to the community and through the streets of the community to the houses to make sure that every property, every apartment building has water available to them. We also do the plumbing systems within those buildings. So when you look at the apartment building and maybe you see a hot water unit in your, in your closet or maybe you have a house and there's a water meter outside, a water engineer is responsible for that and they've designed that so that everybody has access to it. When you turn on your tap because you need a drink of water or maybe you need to fill up your dog's bowl or you need to take a shower or need to have a shave or fill up your, your drink bottle, a water engineer has been responsible to ensure that you have the availability of that water so that it's a good quality so you can drink it or use it for whatever means necessary. When a, a fireman has to attend a site and connect his hose to a hydrant and, and put out a, a, a big flaming building, a water engineer has been responsible to make sure that the fire engineer has access to that water. It's such an important role because water and effectively wastewater, well mainly water, is the number one asset to the human race. It's something that will always be needed. It's something that in itself will never change. The, the technologies to um, make water more available and treat water will change, but water itself will remain as it is. And that's what makes it such a precious resource and that's what makes water engineering such, a, such an important part of this civil engineering realm. So what's some of the projects that water engineers have been involved in? So the best way I can go through this is talk to you about some of the projects I've been involved in. One example of that was a client wanted a, an apartment building, um, but he wanted it in a location where there wasn't much water availability and the water pressure was quite low. So as the water engineer, we needed to design a system where we could increase the pressure in the system, um, we could increase the flow in the system so that each apartment could have available water to them. So we needed to invest in a tank and pumping system, a tank and pumping system that made sure that there was enough water in the tank so that the water wouldn't run out in the apartment building and that the pumps were big enough to induce enough pressure in the system and enough flow in the system so that anyone at any point in time in the day could have a could use that water um, however they wanted. This apartment building project was quite an interesting project because the client wanted to reach six stars sustainability level. Now in order to do that, what we needed to do was find an alternative water source, a non-potable water source, 
and use that within the building. So what we did is we tapped into the non-potable supply within the streets, so which we were lucky enough to have available to us. And we used that water to supply the toilets for toilet flushing. And what that did in the, the total project scheme was reduce the total potable water usage for the building, which is really environmentally friendly and assists in reducing the total load of that building. Another project was a fire system upgrade where the client didn't have an adequate fire supply. So during the hot months, the, the town was at risk or the area was at risk of fire. So they needed a way to put out that fire. So they engaged us to increase the availability of water so that they could put fire hydrants and so that in the event of a fire, a fire brigade could attend and be confident that they had a water supply to, to put out that fire and, and remove that risk. Some other projects you'll be involved in as a water engineer are water main upgrades to increase the water availability for certain towns. Sewer pump stations so that where an area can't reach the gravity sewer system they have to introduce pump systems into their site. You also will be working on upgrade of existing filtration systems to increase the capacity of that so that more people as the town grows, as more people move to the city, those people have available water to them. There's so many different projects, there's so many different assets that we look after and it, the possibilities are just endless. So what does a water engineer do in a project? So to give you an example, let's just say we've got a new water treatment plant. For that new water treatment plant, you'll have many players involved in that project. Obviously you'll have your water engineer, but you also will have a process engineer. You may have a water resource engineer, a structural engineer, a stormwater engineer, an architect, and then you're gonna have the other stakeholders like your client who may be the water utility, you're going to have the environmental um, stakeholders involved as well, like the Environmental Protection Agency. So there's a lot of players involved in a project for a, like a water treatment plant because it's quite a large project. The project will start out with a project initiation phase where everyone comes together in a meeting, all the stakeholders, all the engineers, and they discuss the project requirements, everyone's responsibilities, the timelines, the budget, the brief, where the project is, where the type of equipment that's going to be involved and who's going to benefit from effectively the project being, being started. So you'll finish up in your initiation meeting and the project will get started and you get it, you get started on your concept designs and your concept designs are effectively sketches of what the portion of your design will look like. So for the water engineer or the water infrastructure engineer, it might look like tanks, pumps, um, pipe work in between them, you may have an inlet, you'll have a series of valves and connections and things like that that, that make up the treatment plant itself. You'll start developing those concepts by doing sketches, doing some preliminary calculations about water flow, how big the pipes need to be, how big the tanks need to be, and you'll start looking into those preliminary selections of the type of equipment that you'll be using. You'll also be looking at the codes. You'll also be looking at Australian standards, if you're in Australia that is, uh, the National Construction Code, and you'll be trying to understand which codes apply to you so that when you're designing each element, especially at the start of the project, you know what your limitations are. You know how deep the pipe needs to be, for example. You know how big the tank has to be, how much water has to be in the tank at any one time. You'll understand where the equipment needs to sit and how much space is needed between each one. And, and each of those items and each of those pieces of equipment and each of those ideas have a code that you need to follow. So it's very important that you understand where those codes are and that you always reference those codes. Hot tip here for young engineers just starting out. If you're doing a design and there is a relevant code for that particular design, and you know that you'll be using that probably over and over again. So for example, if you're doing hydraulics, building hydraulics for, for water, AS3500, print that code out, take it home with you and read it from cover to cover. Now I'm not saying understand the entire code in one read. What that will do though, if you read it from cover to cover, you'll remember or you have in the back of your mind what was in the code and that's sometimes half the battle it's knowing where to look you don't have to memorize what's in it but it's a good idea to know what's in the code so for example 
If you want to understand how deep a pipe needs to be or needs to be installed, you'll know, you'll remember from reading the code where you need to look, which code you need to look in, and that'll save you time over the long run. It'll also help in those project meetings when you need to discuss what installation requirements are. So during this initial phase and as you develop your design, you're going to be working with other engineers. You're going to be working with structural engineers who's going to possibly be developing a shed or a structure for some of the equipment to sit in. You're going to be working with process engineers who are going to be helping you with the filtration process. You're going to be working with water resource engineers who, going, who are going to be talking about the environmental aspects of what you're doing. You're going to possibly be working with an architect who's going to have a an idea for how the site's going to look if you've got a special facade and if they want the buildings to look nice you, you may be working with an architect you may be working with a stormwater engineer you will most likely be working with an electrical engineer you need a power supply and you're going to be working with a lot of people and coordinating your designs and that's a very critical aspect of a project life cycle and it's something that you need to definitely be aware of when those projects start it's that constant communication with the people in the project so obviously you need to be developing your technical skills. Your technical skills is probably the most important aspect of your job. You need to be good at what you do effectively. But another crucial thing is soft skills and that is your communication skills both verbally and written. As I said before, you're going to be communicating with other engineers, you're going to be communicating with the client, you're going to be communicating with stakeholders who are going to have to use the equipment that you're designing. So you want to be able to talk to them in a way that's going to give them confidence that what you're designing is sustainable, easy to use and is going to last a long time. You need to be able to communicate with other engineers who don't know what piping is and well don't know how to design pipe work and what requirements are and communicate your design to those engineers like the structural engineer. He doesn't know about tanks and pumps and pipes. He knows about structure. So you need to be able to communicate your design in a way that's not complicated and for, e for people that can understand it easily. So as the design progresses and your sketches get a bit more detailed, you then develop them. You either, you may do it yourself or you may have a particular professional who does it for you. You get those sketches and you put them into a drawing format. It either be AutoCAD, which is a 2D format, Revit or BIM, which are both 3D formats, to essentially develop your design into something that you can build off. And that will generally go for a number of months, depending on the size of the project. And those designs will develop in stages. So you'll start with the concept, which will be an early sketch. You'll get halfway through the project at a 50% design, which will be all the main elements of that design in a 3D model or a 2D model. And then it will progress all the way to 100% where you have all the information, you have all the details, you have all the plans, you have all the sections that you need so that a builder can grab that information and easily go to site and construct what you've designed. Along the way, you'll also be writing. Now, if you're the type of person that isn't good at writing and you're in the engineering field and you wanna get in the engineering field, you're gonna to need to work on your writing because you're going to be writing technical specifications which talk about what your design is, how it is to be built, and the specific calculations and the elements within the design that you've done. It needs to be easy to read um, and easily referenced. You're also going to be writing reports about talking about why you've designed it in a certain way. Um, what's going to happen once it's built? How do you operate what you've designed? You're going to be writing engineering instructions, which on the fly will tell the contractor what to do if they get stuck on anything. You're going to be writing emails. You're going to have to write them in a way that anybody can understand. You're going to have to talk to people that aren't engineers, so you need to know how to put your engineering hat on and you need to know how to put your client hat on and talk to different people. Some of the fun things, well, I mean, those things are kind of fun, but some of the extra cool things about engineering is that you get to go to site, which, you know, when you're going to site and you can see the place where your design is going to be built, it, it's exciting. And you also get to look, you get to go to site and look at it being built. So you get to see the skeleton and then you go again and then you get to see it evolve even further. And you actually get to see other people's designs too. You get to see the structural engineer's design. You get to see 
the, the bones of the building that he's designed and how that how the contractors decided to put that together you get to see your design integrate with their designs and it, it can be quite an exciting time when you've got all the engineers on site talking to one another uh, working through problems you know well it's not perfect but coming to a final solution and and at the end of the day hopefully a happy client so yeah I've, I've covered quite a bit there in a short amount of time and to be honest i probably only touched on the surface of the things you would do but hopefully it gives you a, a broad range of, of the type of things that you'll be doing as a water engineer it can seem a bit daunting at first i know when i first started it was very daunting but let me just say that Yes, it's daunting and yes, it's going to be challenging, but when you break it down into small chunks and you digest them time a bit after bit and you're organized, it becomes less daunting and you start to get the excitement out of it. And hopefully at EngGrad, hopefully with me, you can learn a little bit more, maybe some extra strategies to save you time and to make it less scary and start to get excited about the things you do as an engineer. While I'm here, if you're finding this video useful, don't forget to subscribe and like and hit the notification bell so you know when the videos are coming out so we can share this for, with as many engineers as we can. So what's a day in the life of an engineer like? Well, you wake up, you go to work and you'll be thinking of the projects that you're working on. Maybe you're working on a water treatment plant if you're lucky enough to do something like that. Or maybe it's just a pipeline upgrade. And you'll be thinking about on your way to work how to the next steps in the design of, of that project and what you're going to be doing for the day. You might be doing a concept design on the computer. You might have meetings where you need to discuss your design. You might be at the final stages where you need to review a 3D model of the design and make some changes. You might be in the middle, in the middle of writing a specification or a report that discusses your design. There's all these different things you could be do, doing during the day. More than likely, you'll be doing eight hours a day. You could be doing more if you're extra excited and want to do those extra hours. But I guarantee you this, you won't be doing less. Some of the other parts of an engineer's life are the social parts of work. So you're going to be making new friends. You're going to be making work friends because let's face it, you spend a lot of your life at work. You're going to be making potentially lifelong friends through um, the team members that you meet. Maybe when you start work, you will have a couple of people starting with you and, and make friends with them. Socializing in the social events. Um, and I recommend getting involved if you have a company or if you're in a company that, that does those type of things, I recommend getting involved in, in an early stage. Even if you're a bit of an introvert and you don't really want to get involved, I recommend just making the effort because it makes work a little bit more relaxing to come to when you know that you're coming to a place where you're working with your friends effectively. It makes it more enjoyable and it just makes for a greater experience. And to be honest, if you, if you try and force yourself to get involved in those social aspects, it will actually improve your career as well. So why do I do engineering? I do engineering because I love helping people. And I also love creating stuff. I love seeing things being thought of and then, then come to reality in front of your eyes. And you get to do both of those things in water engineering. And that's such a drive for me. It really creates a passion for the job and makes me come back to work every day knowing that I'm creating and I'm helping people and I'm doing something that I really, really love. So guys, I hope you have found this video helpful to you. I hope it's provided you some insight to the life of a water, en water engineer. I hope it's given you some enjoyment, maybe some inspiration to, to go for your dreams in, in engineering. If, it, if you found it helpful, hit the like button, hit subscribe, and if not, maybe drop me a comment. Maybe tell me how I could make the videos a little better, or maybe you've got some burning questions that you really want to know about water engineering, about civil engineering, or about engineering in general or studying engineering let me know down below really appreciate it thanks for dropping up bye guys i'll see you soon